Hello everyone and welcome to my review of Aliens vs Predator. The game was released on Microsoft Windows format PCs, the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 in February 2010. It was developed by Rebellion Software and was released by Sega. The game is not set in the same timeline as the rather poor movies that have been released in recent years, but rather takes its cue from the graphic novels which were released in the early 1990s. In the game you get to play as one of the three species that are involved, the aliens, the predators, or one of the colonial marines caught up in the middle. The game in its single player element has three specific campaigns whereby you get to play as one of the species already mentioned. Although the campaign itself tends to overlap in terms of the environment, there is a distinct difference between the three, not just in terms of the species that you play, but also the objectives that you have. In this campaign here that you can see, I'm playing as the alien, and this is the beginning of the alien campaign. Now in the alien campaign, you start out um, as a captive of the scientific research team that's on the planet, and naturally things go wrong, and you end up escaping and wreaking havoc. You take your instructions from the Queen who communicates with you, well the inference is she communicates with you on some sort of telepathic level and tells you what objectives you have and where you need to go. It's a really really well thought out campaign and playing as the alien having the ability to run around and scurry on the ceilings and so on and so forth um, is excellent. You can also perform killing moves like you've just seen there whereby if you catch an enemy unawares there is a button which is the grab button and enables you to, fin to finish off the enemies in an almost instant kill move. In addition to that you do have your standard light and heavy attacks should you choose to try and take them on face on. But this isn't advisable, the alien doesn't have any ranged weapons and so using the stealth and ambush tactics as seen in the movies is really prime requisite. This is the beginning of the Predator campaign and again the Predator campaign is well thought out and well executed. What is absolutely critical in these type of games is that you get the feel that you're playing as one of the species involved. In the Alien campaign you do get to perform some of the moves and the special abilities that the Alien has in the movies. For example you're able to blend in with the shadows and stay hidden. You can jump and launch and attack at great distances and move at very high speed. Not to mention the fact that the ability, like I said, to cling to ceilings and just drop down on your unsuspecting foes really does add to the atmosphere. And the same can be said for the Predator campaign as well. One of the great things about the Predators in the movies is the fact that they seem to strike a well balance between firepower and melee, and the same can be said of them in the game as well. You're not just limited like you have been in some of the other Predator games too by power. One of the things which has always annoyed me is the fact that in some of the other Aliens vs Predator games your ability to use one of the main Predator's assets, its invisibility cloak, seemed to be dependent on how much power it had at its disposal at the time. In this version of the game the developers have foregone that limitation. The only limitation to power now is when you use the plasma caster ball, which is fair enough because otherwise the game would become far too easy if you could just stand at a distance and blow everyone away with your plasma rifle. The Predator though, even without the plasma rifle or any of its ranged weapons, is more than a formidable foe with its twin claws as you can see here and like I say the ability to go invisible. One of the other things that's been introduced in this game as well, which is a really cool addition, is the Predator's ability to imitate the voices of its would-be prey. He can use this to lure people away from uh, the safety of a group and pick them off individually without them knowing. Of course, in addition to that, as you can see, the Predator is, has all different view um, options as well, such as the thermal view here and later on in the game you pick up a special helmet which enables you to see the aliens much more clearly than you can otherwise. Again, similar to the alien campaign, 
playing as the Predator, you really do feel like you're stepping into the shoes of one of the most, if not the most, lethal hunter in the galaxy. Although sometimes it can be a little frustrating getting to grips with the controls, they, they're not over complicated. Part of the problem is, is that each of the individual species um, has controls mapped to the controller slightly differently and they do make quite a difference in the game in terms of how successful you can be at exploiting the individual species special abilities. Here I'm using the distract option um, to lure a marine away from where he was going and it enables me to set up a nice little kill. And the marine's gone to the exact spot where I wanted and then you can just attack him and again you have the grab option which is the instant kill. For both the aliens and the predator this is the preferable way of taking out your enemies simply because you don't want them drawing down a bead of fire on you. The marines may be weak in nature but they do pack a tremendous amount of firepower. Again as I was saying earlier the strength of the game is that you do feel like you're playing as, as the predator in the game and this hasn't always been the case. Sometimes you've always got the feeling that in previous versions of the game that it has a, a standard model and everything is sort of being shoehorned into that and this isn't the case here. But aside from the fact that the Predator can go invisible, the Predator can also jump considerable distances as well as you can see there and that's really useful for getting out of trouble sometimes when you become overwhelmed by aliens or when you've got uh, one of the marines sentry guns targeting you or a group of marines firing on you to quickly go invisible and jump a considerable amount of distance is one of the easier ways of getting out of trouble again the predator has the grab moves um, which enables him to take down bad guys relatively quickly and has a few different options as well in how he does it he can either use his spikes up close and personal or he can break them up over his leg or whatever the Predator campaign is probably more involved, I would say, than the Alien one. The Predator, this is the Predator's sacred hunting ground, and so you do get the feeling there's a bit more of a personal um, mandate here in the Predator missions. And out of the three campaigns, I have to say that I did prefer playing as the Predator one, and I just felt there was more it was a bit more of a personal fight against both the aliens and the marines whereas with the other two they obviously were just out there simply to either survive or kill as many people as possible the predator is trying to reclaim the sanctity of the sacred hunting grounds and as I say I really did enjoy playing as them there's not really a whole lot else to say about the predator campaign um, or really many of the other campaigns, although I will cover the Marine campaign in a few moments. It is again, it's well structured and it is well thought out. One of the main niggles though that I do have with the game is sometimes because the game is split into three, di three different campaigns, you do tend to feel that just as you're starting to get into the flow of playing as one of the species, the campaign can become over and done with and this does feel that way with the Predator. No sooner do you really get some of the really cool weapons um, you don't really have that much time with which to use them before you start coming towards the end of the campaign and this is a shame and it is really the the only real fault I can say with the game as far as the Predator campaign is concerned it would have been nicer to have got hold of some of the cooler weapons right from the very beginning the final campaign is the Marine campaign and without doubt this is perhaps the one which had the most attention lavished to it by the developers on the assumption that most people would actually want to play as the Colonial Marines. But as you can see here you've now seen the destruction of the Marines main ship as seen from the Marine point of view which goes back to what I was saying earlier about there being an overlap between the missions. You play as a rookie marine, um, obviously out on your first assignment, as always seems to be the case with the, these games. 
the rookie and the most inexperienced one tends to be the one that saves the day rather incredibly. Although I'm sure that doesn't really happen like that in real life under real combat situations. Again, a lot of detail has been put into the campaign and into playing as the Marine to make you feel like you are actually playing as one of the colonial Marines from James Cameron's Aliens film. From the dropship to the motion tracker, even down to the sound of the weapons, everything has been faithfully recreated to give you total immersion into the atmosphere and into the movies. The actual look of the base as well um, lends heavily from the Aliens film. The colony itself is almost identical to that on LV-426 from the Aliens film. And it's all the better for it. Some people might bemoan the fact that it's not exactly original, but you want to be immersed into the subject matter, and Rebellion have done a really good job in doing that. It has to be said that playing as the Marine is probably the most um, intense experience in the game. You start out with a pretty weedy pistol, but that motion tracker beeping away in the corner all the time, alerting you to things moving and getting closer to you, um, really does build the tension. In addition to the fact that you only have a very, very small light to illuminate some of the more darker areas of the game. What I really enjoyed playing with the Marine as well is the fact that the pacing seemed to be a lot better. Although, like I said earlier, the Predator campaign seemed to have a problem with regards to the weaponry. In the Marine campaign, it seems that the weapons are given over to the player just at the right time, and you do get a good feeling that you're, you know, you're actually going through the game and actually um, unlocking the weapons or discovering the weapons, should I say, um, at appropriate enough times to let you have a good usage of them. Whereas, I say, one of the problems I had with the Predator campaign was that some of the cooler stuff, like the the helmet which enables you to see the aliens seemed to come a little bit too late in the game. You'd, you'd already encountered the aliens to a, a specific enough degree before you were actually given the helmet. The Marine campaign is, as I say, or is the most tense of the three. Um, the aliens come flying at you and they do take a few hits. Um, you can take them down with some well placed hits but honestly you don't want to leave too much of it to chance. In addition to the single player campaign, obviously one of the main focuses of the game is the multiplayer. Aside from the standard death matches that the game has to offer, it does offer a few couple of new game modes. One is Predator Hunt. And in Predator Hunt, one of the players plays as the Predator, the rest play as the Colonial Marines. As the Predator, um, your objective is simply to take out the Marines. But as the Marines, the Marine that actually kills the Predator, ends up taking the part of the Predator. So it's a kind of a bit of a tag your it game in reverse. The other one is Infestation, which is my personal favourite. One of the players plays as the Alien, and the rest play as the marines but the twist is that for every player the alien player kills they then become an alien so slowly but surely the balance of power in the game shifts towards the aliens provided of course that they're good enough players there's nothing worse than being one of the last marines alive running around with a whole host of aliens running after you trying to kill you to sum up aliens vs predator is a really good game I understand from the reviews when it came out it wasn't to everybody's cup of tea, but I think it ticks all the right boxes and does a really good job of portraying the atmosphere and the tension in the films, and I would highly recommend it. It's a really good, enjoyable game, and it's got a good multiplayer game elements as well. So thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you again.